as I look back at our ministry and I look back at all of our lives and see how what we're all going through and what we had to battle and what we had to sit there and endure, there's one common denominator I see through the whole entire thing, and that is a Christian people, us as a church individuals, I've noticed that there's one thing that has kept everything together, has kept everything stable to get through, seen everything to be able to overcome and to see things work out exactly how God wanted it to be and to God to get the glory through something that is heartbreaking, something that's depressed, something that is a battle, uh, something that's hanging out, a burden or a heaviness that keeps on us. And that is something called a, a veiling prayer. A prayer that avails, that, that overcomes, that gets you through to the other side of whatever you're going through, the storm of life, the trial, the valley, the dark places, the, the you know, to get to the mountaintop. And this one consistent item that gets you through the whole thing. And that is in James chapter 5, if you could. Turn to James chapter 5. I want you to look at verse 11. We'll start there. James chapter 5, verse 11 says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, who have seen the end of the, of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your, uh, your yea be yea, your, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. It is among, uh, among you afflicted, let them pray. Is any merry, let them sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save, uh, the, save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up, and if he have uh, committed sins, let they, uh, let they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. Keyword here, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth what? So there's a few things here that require for this kind of prayer. <clears throat> for prayer to avail, we have to be righteous. Meaning we can't be in the middle of sin and enjoying our sin and kicking God aside for your convenience of your sin. You've got to be living right for the Lord. You've got to be in tune with God. You've got to be in the center of His will. You've got to be walking with Him closely. You've got you to know exactly how God wants you to live in order to pray and see God's will come out and get you through and have a righteous, availing prayer through the situation. For God's will to be unfolded, to be revealed, to give you what you need. And today we're going to see some of the things of how important prayer is with the Lord. The availing prayer, the effectual prayer, of a fervent prayer. <clears throat> and I tell you this morning, as I look back at 11 years of this ministry, and see the people that have come and gone. Some have come hating God. Some have come and left because they chose their sin over the Savior. Some have stayed, stuck with it and allowed God to work through it. And they're staggering, where they doubted God and their faith had dwindled, but then God gave them faith back, and they stayed, tried to stay faithful to God in the midst of their storm and their battle, and they gutted it out for God to show exactly and reveal His will to get to the other side. A veiling prayer. All I know is this, if we're praying to the one that can reveal His will, praying to the one that can get you through it, quitting on God ain't an answer. Here, he talks about the paces of Job. Most Christians don't want to go through it and pray because they don't want to live the Job life. They'd rather take the easy way out and live the Judas life. Basically, they just want to kill themselves spiritually. I mean, just hang themselves as a Christian and say, I'm not going to live as a Christian any longer. And they choose sin. Or they run from God. There's, there's that Judas sin, right? This is our message. I was going to pre. You could do the Judas way, you could do it the Jonah way, or you could do it the Job way. Job's way will lead you back to God, and God will bless you in the end to show you on the other side. Today, I'm going to preach a little bit about the availing prayer. How can we avail in prayer? How can we? What 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 is the benefits of a of an availing prayer? Being righteous in the sight of God, doing His will, staying close to Him. What is the benefits of that kind of prayer? Listen, I've got to tell you this right now this morning. 
It's just not the service. I've seen people serving God and think it's going to go away. No, it's the availing prayer. I've seen people sit there and say, I'm just going to go find somewhere where I can get the comforting preaching and word that I need. And they go somewhere else. I see people sit there and just quit on God. No, it's the availing prayer that sticks it out and you see where God gives you exactly what you need through prayer. The effectual, fervent, righteous person praying, seeking God's face. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you so much for this time. Lord, I pray you bless this message. I have no idea exactly, what Lord, what you will behold. But I do know this. I do know this, Lord, that you're in control. Lord, help us understand this prayer, the veiling prayer, Lord, in the Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. One good reason we should all should pray is this, that God could do more in a second than we can do in ourselves in a lifetime. Amen? So why don't you think about that? Every time we go through something, we're trying to figure it all out. And the more you figure it out, the worse it gets, the more complex it gets. It becomes like an entanglement. The more we sit there and say, well, what did I do wrong? I remember I had people this, let me tell you, look up here. I had people come to me and say, well, the reason why the things are going on in your life the way they are is because, because you're out of the will of God and, and you, you left your first church and, and you sit there and, and know you're, you're sitting behind the scenes and you're, you must not be doing something right in the sight of God. And I look at those people with a tear in my eye and says, you have no idea. You're foolish. Almost like a Job thing. And the same people that try to point fingers at me it was astounding how it rose up. The same things that were happening in my life and my family started happening in the church with other families in that church. Be very careful to start making accusations and stupid comments like that when you don't have the whole story, amen? So what did we do? We continued praying. We asked God to go out and do what God had to do. We had to give things over to God for God to reveal his will and let God deal with some things that were out of our control. But I do know this. With our prayers, God can do a whole lot more fast, do a lot more things faster than we can a whole lifetime to try to fix them. Because if they were able to be fixed, we would already fixed them already. We would have focused and made it happen and worked it. Listen, give it to God. God doesn't let me. You're talking about the God that sat there and said, "Universe exists." Boom, the universe exists. Right? Earth be there. Earth became there. Hey, we need a moon. Moon, show up. It's kind of dark right now. Let's get the sun during the day. And now you start putting, making the whole universe together, right? All by a spoke, spoken word. Why can't he do that with other things? God is there to show us some things about this Italian prayer. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says this, Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we're getting close to it, let your request be made known unto God. There's some things you're going to need for supplies. There's going to be some things you need to help you exactly what you're going to need to, to go ahead and get what you need. There's some things that you might not even know that you need. It's amazing when you pray for things that exactly what you need. God gives you other stuff that you didn't know you needed. Amen? It's like, oh, wait, I needed, I needed this this day. But I didn't know I'm going to need it that day because I didn't know what I was going to have to endeavor that day. Things I'm going to have to encounter that day. But you're still praying for the main thing you need. But right now, God says, you're not ready for that. Let me give you some of these little baby steps to prepare you for that big thing you need. It could be patience. It could be more compassion. It could be courage. It could be comfort. It could be love. You just never know what the Lord has in store for you. I want to show you some things in the Bible that we've learned in the past that we need to pray for. Some examples in the, in, in the Old Testament as well as in, in the New if you could, turn to Exodus chapter 14, if you could, Exodus chapter 14. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 14, I'm going to share some things with you here. I use this, I won't, I'm not going to sit there because I don't want to lie to you. Oh, we'll be here, we'll, we'll get through this real quickly, we'll be done, no time at all, you know, I, I can't say that. I can't say that we're going to close 15 times, I can't say that either because then you're all going to call me a liar. And then you won't appreciate me no more. There will be no more pastor appreciating month for the month of October here at Charity and all that kind of stuff. I, gotta, I won't say that no more. Okay, you're used to it. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> I'm just going to keep on chugging and stay focused. Okay, we get done, we're, we'll be done here. Don't worry. You're not going to miss the Bills game because there is no Bills game. I don't even know if we have a team yet, so we'll go ahead and just keep on, you know what I mean? Uh, Exodus chapter 14, if you could. Look at verse 13 down to 16, this. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse 13, says this. 
And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. For the Egyptians, whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again, no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall, uh, shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Now we know what's coming on, the party in the Red Sea, right? But he said, cry, look, he said, cry, look at, he said, cry, cry thou unto me. The Lord shall most pray for me. He's getting ready to give a way of escape. There's some things that you're in the middle of that you just wish you can get the heck out of there, amen? But let me tell you this right now. It says in the New Testament that he'll go ahead and he'll find a way of escape. Here, Moses is getting a way of escape. He get ready to part the Red Sea so they don't have to be part of being attacked and killed by the Egyptians, amen? Can I tell you, this morning, there are certain situations you can sit there and try to think it out. You can try to you know, fight back out. You can try to sit there, whatever. But when you pray, God will find a way to get out of it. He'll give you a subtle way to kind of sneak away from the whole thing. You don't have to be part, partake of the evil. Partake of the, the danger that's coming. Partake of the fight. Amen? Can I tell you, God has revealed, God has given times in my life where I just wanted to sit there and say, it's getting on. And God kind of hushed the whole thing. Like, for example, arresting somebody before I got to him. Not me, the other person, right? Or that person coming and apologizing when it was going to be, I knew it was going to be a confrontation. And you pray for the guy to see the error of their way, and they come back and say, Pastor, I got to talk to you. I was wrong. You're right. And I was wrong. I said, Well, no, God's word is right. It says, I just tried showing the scriptures what God had to say. You're putting yourself in danger to hurt yourself. It's my job as a shepherd to make sure you don't hurt yourself. And you go the way of the Lord and escape a confrontation, escape a fight, escape a battle, escape a situation that can get very ugly, would not glorify God in order to make a stand and defend the flock, defend God's church and ministry. Can I tell you this morning, sometimes you've got to have to pray and you have to pray for a way of escape so God can show you the promised land. Amen? So I tell you, sometimes you just got to just get out of it so God can give, show you the way that it needs to be. This happens plenty of times in this ministry. Plenty of times in my life. Plenty of times in your, in your life. You can see that. Prayer is important. It was for Moses right here. He said, the Lord said, cry unto me. Right? Cry unto me. So you got to cry unto him. Number two, <clears throat> here's a good one. Jonah. Jonah. The book of Jonah, if you could, the book of Jonah. Who could tell me where Jonah is? Hey, you're good. <laughs> oh, like you're good. Whereabouts is Jonah? No. Come on now. No, we're in the Bible. He's amongst the prophets. Who can tell me where? He's a minor prophet. He's not a major prophet. But where do you find that poor guy? Huh? Thank you. Very good, you Bible scholars. See, if you come to Bible study on Thursday, I fine tune you even more. All right, Jonah chapter 2 when you get there. Jonah chapter 2. Now make sure you guys are staying awake, okay? I can only preach so loud for so long. You're making me break a sweat up here. How many here are hot this morning?